About a year ago, I took a look at a website that allows us to very easily create great looking screen captures and apply those to various different devices like phones, tablets, mobiles, all those kinds of good things. And I was incredibly impressed by how good it was for absolutely zero cost. But at the time, I wasn't sure if they'd actually go and keep that free model or whether they'd include paid features. Well, a year down the line, and we're going to go back and take a quick look and see what's changed and if I still recommend this tool. So what is it? It's called Shots.so. It's a totally free website that allows you to easily take your screen captures and put those in, design them, style them, apply them to mockups, and so much more. It's incredibly powerful, incredibly simple, and we'll get back to what I think of it a little later. Okay, so this is what we have. You can see it asks us to drop or paste a screen grab in. I've already captured something, so I'm just simply going to paste that in with Control or Command V. And you can see we now have our screenshot in our design. Okay, so it looks kind of ugly at the moment, but this is where we have so many options. First of all, let's take a look at the left-hand side. We've got two different sections here. We've got our mock-up and we've got our frame. Now, a mock-up is where we can choose how we want this to look, whether we want it to sort of be a screen grab, we're going to apply different effects to it, or if we want to make it look like it's part of a browser or something like that. So you can see if we open up where it says screenshot, we have phones, tablets, laptop, desktop, and wearable. Go into any of these, and you can see it'll show you a representation of what that mock-up will look like. Pretty cool. Come back to all, and you can see everything, and you can scroll through. Now... These are not sort of click and job done, although you can do it that way. If we select, for example, the browser, you'll see now on the right hand side, we have some pre set up kind of presets. If you scroll through, you can see you've got a selection of different options. Choose this minimal desktop and you can see we get different options here where we can do comparisons and so on. Or just use a screenshot and you see you've got some different options here again to do some comparisons if you want to, where you can simply add in another image. For this example, let's go and choose a browser. Let's choose this now, and you can see that picks up our preset. Pretty cool. But this also opens up more options on the left-hand side, depending upon what you choose. So these are context-sensitive. So we have currently six different browser designs to choose from. You've got your Safari, Light and Dark, Chrome, Light and Dark, and they've recently added the Arc browser. So if you're an Arc browser user, you can select that and make it look like you've got a screenshot inside your Arc browser. Pretty cool. Chrome, again, you can see we can choose various different options. And what I do like about this, again, this is something that's quite new. In the address bar, you can put what you want in. So let's just say this is from WP Tuts website. I can pop that in there, and I'm styling that the way that I want it to be styled. Now, speaking of styling, you can see we've also got this UI scale. Again, these are new options. These were all been brought in very recently. So now what we can do is we can scale the overall UI in this example. So we can make it smaller, if you want to be less intrusive, or make it much bigger. Up to you how you want to go. And again, you've also got these options underneath, so presets. So you can see this will change the sort of ratio. Now, obviously, this depends upon the image that you've copied, whether it will work very well. You can see in this example it doesn't because it's a 16 by 9 ratio. But if you want to, you can use these options. And again, you've got things like your portrait, your landscape, and so on. Let's set that back. You can choose auto as well if you want to, up to you. But you can see we're now starting to customize this. We can also then come in and adjust the shadow. Now before we had three choices, but now we have more and we can adjust things like opacity and so on. So you can see if we don't want any shadow, we can disable it. You want it sort of like a nice tight shadow, you want a larger spread. Let's actually change this to a different design. And you can see this a bit better. So you can see the shadow changes. If we want no shadow whatsoever, or we can go for realistic. Now on top of that, if we switch back out of realistic and go for, for example, spread, click these three dots underneath, and now we can position where the shadow comes from. So you can see we can easily position this how we want it to display. Again, pretty cool. Adjust the opacity of the shadow, so you want to make it a bit more subtle, drop it down, want to make it slap bang in your face, you can't miss it, you can pop it higher. Up to you how you want to work with this. Again, all pretty cool stuff. Choose a different design, Adjust the shadow position, for example. There you go. Easy. Size and position. Well, as its name would suggest, we can adjust the size of our image. Pretty cool. And you also adjust the position. So again, we can just move this around as we see fit. And again, this is one of those new updates. Previously, we had like these little zones we could click into, but we couldn't sort of position it in an absolute fashion like we're doing now. 
but you can easily move this around or you can click on any of these little zones to snap it into position as you want to. Also, if we click back out of this, you can see we've got this little resize handle. So you click your image, got your resize handle, and we can resize on screen how this is going to look. So we don't, don't want to use the scale options over on the left-hand side. We don't need to. We can do it directly inside the browser window itself. You can also change the image if you want to. So if you put a different one or you want to keep all the settings the same, just click to replace your image, job done, all pretty cool. And if you want to, you've also got the option to hide the mock-up so you can make sure your background is what you want. You can undo, redo, and you can preview to get rid of all the distractions. It's just really well done. It's very responsive. You can see everything I'm doing here is in real time. Okay, so we've kind of seen what's inside here. And you can, again, hide the mock-up here if you want to. You can adapt your image to the, to the screen and so on. But most of these options are available directly inside the editor itself. Now, if we come over to the frame, this is where, again, a lot of new features have been added in. You want to add a cool sort of overlay effect? Well, click on one, and you can see we've got, opening these up, we've got more sort of overlay shadows. So you want to make it look like the light for a window coming through? You can choose the option. And again, we've got these options to adjust the opacity. So you can make it as subtle or as in your face as you want to. But you can also do things like then to add noise to your background. So you can see as we do that, if you can see it on screen, we now get noise in there. You can also blur this as well. So if you're doing something like with an image and you want to blur that, so you can just get the colors and so on, you can use the blur effect. You can also choose between various different backgrounds. So we can have a transparent background, so you can pop this onto anything you want. You can set a dedicated color background from here, so you can choose a specific color. Let's remove that noise effect for now and the blur. Or you can use an image if you want to, so you can choose that from the list of images you can upload. Or if you want to, you can use Unsplash and grab an image directly from there. So again, all pretty cool stuff. Now, one of the newer features, this isn't as new as some of the other ones I've shown you, but what this is doing is this is looking at the actual image itself, looking for colors inside there, and it'll give you a range of different ways in which you can utilize those colors for your background. So, for example, you can see we've got these different colors, where it's pulling various different shades, like yellows and so on, from the image itself, and then allowing us to use those in our design, which is pretty cool. You can also see we've got different ways of working with this. You kind of have these sort of blurred blob effects, or we've got solid colors that are being pulled in from the image itself, or you kind of have these sort of gradient effects, different gradient effects, all pretty cool stuff. You've then got your option for your solid colors, which again, you can expand these out, choose a solid color from here if you want to, or you can choose from any of these sort of like these mystic gradients and so on. So for example, if we choose this background, you can see that'll put like a typical Mac background in it. We can come up to the top, we can apply blur to this. You can see that blurs it out. We can apply some noise to this. We can change this overlay effect, and we're creating something totally unique. Now, before we wrap this section up, if you want to, you can also change the aspect ratio. So this is currently set to a four by three, but if you're doing this to use it for, let's say, a thumbnail for YouTube, you hit your 16 by nine, you can see that sets it up. Let's change our image to a slightly different layout. We can come back over to our mock-up. We can choose exactly where and how we want to position this. So we may say we want to pull this over a little bit over there. We want to make it a bit smaller. It's all incredibly easy to do. And also, like I say, you can see very, very quick. So once you've got everything the way that you want, you've got a couple of options. You can download this as a PNG if you want to, or you can simply copy it as a TIFF file. And you can also open up these options to choose what format you want, whether you want to use a PNG or a JPEG, and also the actual quality it's going to download in. So you may want to use this for print. Well, you can set this to be something like three times the output. You can see it tells you the resolution is going to be there, around 6K. Then you can just choose to download this as a PNG or a JPEG or copy it as a TIFF file and then use it as you see fit. But it's incredibly simple to work with. And I love what you can do with this. I've been using this pretty much every single day to do various different things as part of my workflow, creating thumbnails and things for YouTube and so on. Now, if you want to see what new features have been added in at any point, if you click this little square, the app menu, and choose the option for what's new, you can see this will show you what's been added in, when it was added in, so you can kind of get an update. As you can see, the latest update is June 2024, so literally last month. Pretty cool. And again, if you click, you can also change this into light mode if you want to, system, so it'll track what you're using, 
dark mode, up to you what you'll do. And you'll follow them on the various different social media and send feedback and so on. But Short So has really upped their game in the last couple of weeks where they've added a lot of these new features that I've shown you today. I absolutely love this tool. I use it pretty much every single day for doing screenshots, for thumbnails, for YouTube, to use it in various different things online. It is so simple, so powerful. You don't need any kind of design skills to make great looking thumbnails, great looking screen grabs and so on, and share those on your socials. If you want to do mock-ups of products, you can do that directly inside here as well. It is incredibly simple to work with. So, do I recommend it? Absolutely, 110%. It's improved considerably since I took a look at it last year, and I would say if you're not using it, you're missing out big time. You can check it out, shots.so. You can check out the details in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.